joining me this evening. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and I hope you all have a great New Year. Do you all have any plans for New Year's? I personally have a date with the couch with probably some popcorn or something. So I hope you're all doing great. It's unusually warm here in Louisiana for December. We're currently in the high 70s, sometimes getting up to low 80s, which is really worrying me because tulips. Guys, I'm so scared I'm gonna end up with short tulips. You know, I did chill my tulips before. I put them in the ground back in November, at the end of November, but I thought December, surely we would be in the 40s. And we are not. So, we actually got so warm, I ended up removing my row covers. And when I removed my row covers, I had a surprise. Do you see my surprise? I have flowers. My anemones are blooming. I think that's an anemone. It's blooming in December. So if you have row covers on and it's warm outside, please take them off. I, I had them on to protect them from the deer because I was too lazy to put the deer netting. So I removed them. I saw this beautiful sea of green and a beautiful pink flower. <laughs> hey, Ahava. Thanks for joining. So all the row covers are now off. These are my only two flowers. I think I have a third out there blooming. And I went ahead and covered everything that I could with deer netting. I still need to buy more deer netting. I didn't have enough to cover where the tulips are or where the new tulip bed is going. Hey Lisa, thanks for joining. So I've got to buy more deer netting to help protect them from the deer. Hey Debbie Salite. Hope you all all had a great Christmas and holiday as well. Hey Andy, hey Christine's Garden. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. Hey Candace, thanks for joining. I was just talking saying it's been such a warm December and when I removed my row covers, I had flowers. <laughs> flowers. My anemones are blooming. So if you have row covers on and it's warm, be sure to take them off. Otherwise, you're going to have flowers about three months early. <laughs> uh, so went ahead and took off all the row covers. I found a great use for all those rocks that came with the compost. I used those to weigh down the row covers and the deer netting that I put up. It is a beautiful pink flower. Looking forward to having a lot more of those in March when it's appropriate for them to bloom. They're saying that we should have possible snow and freezing rain and ice week after next. We'll see, I have been told if you have a warm December, it's gonna be snowmageddon in February. You know, last, say last year, this year, 2021, was very unusual weather for us. Yeah, a ton of deer netting. Uh, we had not one, but two snowstorms. That never happens here. So in January, we had a snowstorm. February, we had a week-long, what we call snowmageddon. <laughs> yeah, pull up everything so if they don't bloom, yes, uncover them. So we had a week-long snowmageddon in February. You can watch it. There's a video where we were literally stuck in the house for a week because here we're not used to ice and snow. We're not equipped to deal with ice and snow. So they're saying we could possibly have another February like that because we're just so hot this December. The first week in January, it's going to be in the 70s. That's not normal. I need it to cool down because I'm so, so scared that my 2,500 tulips I planted in November are going to end up being this tall because of the weather. And there's, there's nothing I can do about it. The only thing I can do is next year, keep them in the refrigerator until December, like the end of December. I still have the 1,700 in the refrigerator that need to be put in the ground. And now I'm running into the issue of, oh no, the ground is constantly wet. And Lisa Mason Ziegler, she preaches on her podcast, The Gardener's Workshop, 
don't work with saw. And I'm like, I need you to dry out. I need it to cool down. I need the soil to dry. And let me get back to planting. Hey Penny, thanks for joining. I've been using my little seed separator thing she got me. They were fantastic for the snapdragons. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, it is like walking on a tightrope. It's like, mmm. Oh, it worked. Thank you, babe. <laughs> Thank you for giving your wife $5. I appreciate it. We was, I wasn't sure if that option was available or not on there, so I told him to test it out if it was. So I'm glad to know that works. But uh, it is like work walking on a tightrope. I never know what the weather's going to do. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of people struggle with that. It's, do I go ahead and plant my plants out? What about the first or the last frost? Do you plant just when you got a 10% chance of that last frost or do you wait? Thus, farm life. You never know what's going to happen. On to good news, I have 1,700 other tulips that once they're in the ground, yes, Mother Nature likes to throw a curveball. Once I get those other tulips in the ground, they should be fine. I just need to hope that it dries up. Otherwise, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to just work wet soil and just get them babies in the ground. On my giveaway video, someone said that they love duck, they love irises. And that reminded me, I have about 200 irises in the refrigerator that I need to put in the ground still. Completely forgot about them. They've been sitting in a crisper drawer. Ooh, yeah, we haven't even hit 32. I think the coldest we've gotten is maybe 39. It's very unusual. We are not this warm. I mean, even sitting here, I'm kind of like, we need to turn the AC on a little bit better, babe, if you can hear me. It's hot. <laughs> Never thought I'd have the AC go in this much in December. But what? So we'll see. The earth is dying. We'll see what happens. It's the joy of farming. Even longer next time. Don't bank on it being a cold December if you're in the south. Just go ahead and hold them in the fridge until later. So lesson learned there. Oh no. Okay, with the bulbs, you think I'll be good, Lisa, with the bulbs? Because I did wonder that. I wondered with these flowers blooming now, if they would be able to bloom again come the spring. Because I'm like, not planning on doing the farmer's market until March or February, whenever everything starts really blooming and going. You know, there's been some gnats. But you're right, the mosquitoes haven't been too bad considering it's so warm. Because normally as soon as, you know, it warms up, there's just swarms of mosquitoes. Ugh. Maybe it helps that I don't have so many plants outside right now. I haven't seen that many spiders, you know, knock on some wood or something. Yes, thank you. Cross your fingers. I really hope my tulips come up okay. But, you know, that's farming. That's when you're a new farmer. You've got to learn some lessons in your climate as you go through. Uh, fungus gnats on your babies. I'm so sorry. No insects in Florida. It's butterflies only. Really? I would think that you would be swarming. So about Florida, we, I hope you all had a wonderful Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. Thank y'all so much. Uh, for Christmas, we surprised the kids with a trip to Disney World. I've never been. My kids have never been. I'm so excited. That was their Christmas gift from us. We're going in February, right before the flower season hits. I'm hoping to have all my plants in the ground and I'll water everything before I leave. But I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I told the lady who's planning it, I said, look, this vacation's mostly for me. The kids are just going, so I don't feel like a bad mom for not taking them to Disney World when I go. But super excited for that. And then, I'm sure y'all saw on the community post, my Flower Hill Farm Grow Along Seeds came this week. And I figured I'd open them up with you guys if y'all are up for that. I haven't even opened it. I've been saving it for y'all. I don't really remember what all came in the Grow Along. I think some sunflowers came in it. But let's open it up and see. 
How many of y'all are participating in the Grow Along with Flower Hill Farm? It ought to be really interesting. If it wasn't for bad luck, you wouldn't have any. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So opening it up. So we've got some cinnamon basil seeds. I kind of like let y'all see how the packet looks. Got a lot of information on there. So let's see, we've got some cinnamon bouquet basil seeds. I love me some cinnamon basil. Benarish giant zinnia mix. Sunflower sun rich orange. Oh, Andy, you'll be growing with me. That's exciting. Snapdragon rocket mix. I have not grown the rocket mix of Snapdragon, so that'll be fun to experiment. Is it? I want to go to Disney World so bad. I can't wait. Is it February yet? Baby's Breath Lady Lace. Okay. Y'all are going to have to help me with this Baby's Breath. I have tried to grow Baby's Breath, the Baby's Breath, for three years now. And it, I just can't do it. We are going to stay on the property when we go, yeah. We will stay on the Disney World property for the first time. Maybe after that, not so much. Because none of the parks are really there anymore. But I'm pretty excited about going. And then last but not least, Rebecca Goldilocks. Ooh, are these the ones? Oh, no, got a brown center. I really want the Rebecca with the green eye. I'm having to control myself, guys. I have been having seed fever. It's like, I know I already bought my order. I've already got everything I want. But I don't think I have any Rebecca's with the beautiful green eye. Uh, last year, the snapdragons I grew were Potomac, the one with the C, what, Co Costas, Potomac, Costa, Madame ba Butterfly, and Chantilly. Grew them all. I really love the Potomac. The Potomac lavender was so beautiful. Um, I learned that here in the South, even though we had grow snapdragons all year long, I shall not actually grow snapdragons all year long. The ones I started in February and planted out in the spring because I didn't know I could overwinter them so easily, they did fantastic. The ones I tried to grow starting in May, June-ish, they grew. They got about that tall. <laughs> and they were so skinny. So, I uh, learned a lesson there. If you're in the hot south, you may want to start the snapdragons all during the winter or February and March. Because once we warm up, they do not like the hot weather. The yellow is magic marker yellow. <laughs> I really like me some yellow though. Not hot there in Nebraska. I bet it's nice and cool there. Oh. I, me and my husband are polar opposites when it comes to weather, okay? I prefer cold weather. I've never really seen real snow except for what we've gotten here, which I've been told is not real snow. But I would love to go somewhere with snow where it's cold, where you don't have to have AC in your house. And my husband, on the other hand, would love to go where it's hot. He would love to go to like Mexico and just sweat all the time. I ain't about sweating, unless it's for flowers. I'll sweat for flowers. Costa, yes, that's what I was thinking of. I really like the Costas as well. Uh, I ordered a lot more Chantilly for this year. I'm going to grow more Potomac, the Liberty mix. We'll see how that goes. And then I got Greenhouse Forcing from Geo Order. Yes, it's so hard not to order everything. <sighs> okay, so is it possible to have too much status? I, uh, I didn't realize that status needs a foot spacing between each plant. And I planted 150 of them. It took up about 70 feet after, you know, planting in rows of three. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a whole row. I, you know, I make these wonderful Excel spreadsheets. Beautiful laid out Excel spreadsheets, color coded. What's going there? 
and how I'm gonna grow it, how many I'm gonna grow, the spacing, everything. And then I start the seeds and I just, I plant enough to make sure if any of them die or don't make it, I've got extras. But here's where I mess up. I don't get rid of the extras. I keep the extras and I plant the extras so then my whole spreadsheet's just out the window. <laughs> Potomac is great. Hi Patrice. Thanks. So yeah, we are pretty much all my snapdragons are started now. Um, my husband did make fun of me because I do have a tray of dead snapdragons <laughs> on the seedling tray right now. Um, they were ones that I just, I never transplanted out. I just let them slowly die out and die. So I ended up having to start more. Yes, it's so hard to cull the extra seedlings. You know, you get so excited because you, you were able to create life. You were the flower goddess. You are in a toga growing flowers and it's amazing. And then, you know, you just don't want to get rid of them because you grew them. You were able to grow them. Why would you destroy the one life that you grew? When do I start my Rebecca? Okay, so... Rebecca is a cool flower for me. And so I was supposed to start it back in October. And I believe I started in September. And I transplanted it in November. I think. I actually transplanted it a little late. But it was fine. It's stayed so small for so long. But it'll overwinter and do really well. This is my second year attempting to grow Rebecca. And um, the first year I didn't really try. I got to germinate and then just never transplanted it out it died in its tray and then last year i just couldn't i tried to direct seed it because that's what johnny's select seeds recommended and i just i couldn't get it to grow so this year i followed lisa mason ziegler's directions and i was able to get them to germinate they came in the tray transplants were beautiful they went in the ground and now they're finally spreading well good luck candace hopefully you're uh Rebecca, do well for you too. I planted several varieties, uh, but I don't have any with that green eye. And I'm sure y'all watched Flower Hill Farm and You Can't Eat the Grass. They had that wonderful Rebecca with the golden flowers with that beautiful Irish green eye. <sighs> Let me tell you, I am green with envy at that. Yeah, you know, it. we have black-eyed Susans, Rebecca, that grow naturally here, and they just show up everywhere, but they're not the kind you really want to use. Not the natural ones, but I just, the summer heat is just so intense for these seedlings. I'm finding it, the only things that really do well during the summer heat has a seedling is Celosa, Zinnias, and Cosmos. The name of that Rebecca I believe it's called Prairie Sun or Geo has a Irish eye Rebecca. I have built me a cart full or list from Geo Seed and Johnny's. I keep building list of seeds and then having to exit out. You know, watch Serena and Nicole and I build up that ooh or they've been sending the catalogs, guys. They've been sending the catalogs and it's so hard not to buy it. Yeah, and you know, I know a lot of things are perennials in my zone, but I'm still figuring out where I want that perennial bed. So, I don't know if I'll leave them in their spot or not. I left them on the edge of my farm, so if I wanted to leave them there, I could. Also, possible game changer, this year we're experimenting with dahlias. The past two years I've tried to grow dahlias and have had issues. Uh... My cousin, my cousin, my husband's aunt's husband is a landscaper. And I was chatting him up during Christmas and he said for my dahlias, I need to provide 30% shade in the afternoon. So I've got to build some kind of shade structure and we're going to experiment. I figure he probably knows what he's talking about. Yes, Irish eyes or prairie sun, either one, I think are that green Rebecca. So, where my tulips are now in that bulb bed, that's where I'm going to put the dahlias to experiment with them. 
Um, we're actually on 33 acres, but we're only using about maybe three of it. And my actual farm is maybe a quarter of an acre is what I'm farming on, probably less. It's a lot of area. I just, you know, we'll work on slowly expanding. But that's where I'm gonna put the dahlias is in that bulb bed. And I'll have some of them shaded with a shade cloth and some of them not. And we'll see which ones do better. And maybe this year, maybe I can actually sell some Rebecca's, not Rebecca, <laughs> sell some dahlias at my farmer's market. That would be fantastic if I can get some dahlias to grow. I only ordered maybe 30 total because I'm still learning how to successfully grow dahlias and I can leave them in the ground. I don't have to worry about pulling them up. Yeah, I've got plenty of space. Um, grasses, I'm still figuring out as well. You know, I tried to grow bunny tails because I saw where you could dry them and then dye them and they look so cute. And all my bunny tails just, they died on me every single one so you know it's i'm starting to get more like serena's mindset of what sells and what can i grow and so far i know i can grow zinnias cosmos celosa and i can definitely grow some yarrow so and basil basil grows really well too so where my flower farm ends the sunflower area between that and the green meadow it's just iron ore it is pure rock and iron ore so there's a big old break between the sunflower flower farm area and then the meadow which that meadow i'm gonna have to get like a pitchfork and go out there and sink it into the ground and move it like lisa mason ziegler says to help break it up that earth is just so compact the water and minerals cannot penetrate it so we'll just have to see how that goes you know oh no candace so i'm very excited on that and guys i also had a phone call my city rustin uh, has a gardener's club called the rustin gardener's club interested in speaking there in january and I said, I would love to, but I don't know what you want me to talk about. Plant killer for gardeners. And she said, we just want to hear about your journey. I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. So I'm very excited. You know, if you would have told me two, three years ago that I would be on YouTube teaching about flower farming and that my backyard would be a flower farm and and I would be speaking at the Rustin Master Gardeners Club. I would well, have thought maybe you had me confused with somebody else. I'd have been like, I kill aloe vera? Are you, are you sure? You certainly have some challenges there. Very tricky. Yeah. But, you know, everybody has challenges depending on their weather, their soil. Yeah. Weather especially. It is a challenge. But we will learn what works with my climate. And I'm determined to grow Bells of Ireland. I planted about 50 of them into four holes and one has germinated. <laughs> I will grow Bells of Ireland before I die. Do you hear me? <laughs> I hope. We'll see. Working on it. I've been told that we really can't grow them here because we're just so hot and humid and they don't like it. But we'll see. Maybe I just need to plant them in my house with a grow light and see if I can grow them that way failed miserably with the Bells of Ireland. They are hard to grow. They are not an easy flower. Yes, they are so hard. I actually got them to sprout last year, but then it got too hot. So now I'm trying to plant them now. Oh, thank you. Thank you about my hair. Uh, my hairdresser quit on me. She, she retired. Melinda, if you're watching this, I'm very sad that you left me. So I had to put my bangs, I refused to get a haircut until I can find a new stylist I like, and it took 33 years to find the one I like. The uh, Bells of Ireland, 
they're a hard flower. If you're new, don't feel bad about not being able to grow it. A lot of people can't grow it, and then it depends on weather conditions. But if you're up north, as soon as you can work that soil, they recommend planting it. You should have a better, if, especially if you're in a drier climate, that's what Bells of Ireland likes. It likes it cold and dry after it germinates. When it's germinating, it wants to stay nice and moist. But after that, it likes to stay cool and dry. Mine got about this tall, and I was so excited that I was going to have Bells of Ireland. And then they turned brown. Yeah, she makes it look so easily. <laughs> so, mine turned brown, and then they just, they died. I don't know what happened. I did winter sewing with Bells last year and had a good success. And zone 5. I'm zone 8, so I'm hoping I can do the same thing that maybe starting them now they'll have a good chance and, you know the darnest thing was last year after i gave up trying to germinate a tray of them inside i just threw them outside the whole tray and they started germinating right there in the yard it's like really you've been inside and nice grow lights and stuff but the moment i throw you out you start growing I swear they are just something else. They have their own mood. And I'm also growing foxglove again this year. I know I said I wouldn't grow it anymore because, you know, they get squished when you put them in the market bouquets. They squish, and I don't want it to squish. But I'm going to work on selling more mason jar arrangements this year at the market. I uh, ordered some ribbon. I'm going to learn how to make bows. I will be watching Lauren Garden answer. She had a video where she made a bow. I will be watching her and tying some pretty ribbon around the mason jars and pastel colors to sell flowers in the jars and have the beautiful, what color? Camelot Rose. That's the color I got of the foxglove. So I'm going to attempt to grow it and see how it does in the jar arrangements and how well it sells. Yeah, I have, Candice. Uh, if you're going to do a wrapped market bouquet, those bells, they're just, they get squished so easily. You would really have to make sure that the top half is the only part that's out and exposed and the rest of it's been stripped. But, you know, when they get at home, they may want those lower bells or however it sticks out. I just, I didn't like it in the bouquets. I tried to make it work. But they just, I just couldn't make it work easily. I can make it work in vase arrangements okay. And they produce very well. The foxglove produces very well. But once again, it's figuring out what I can sell at my market and what people like to buy. I think last year I had the white with the purple speckled throat. And this year I'm doing the beautiful Camelot Rose. I feel like it would sell better just because it's such a striking color compared to the white. So I'm going to do that and place them into the mason jars. Yeah, even re remove the lower florets. My wrapping paper, they're too dense. It doesn't work for me. But, you know, if you can make it work, go for it. Do it. Do whatever works for you. But uh, I also have to tell everybody because, you know, I'll have them come up. Um, foxglove is poisonous. Yep. And they'll ask me, is, are any of these flowers poisonous? And, of course, I'll go, yes, foxglove, this one, is poisonous. Just don't drink the water or ingest the plant. If you have an animal, if you have a cat that likes to eat flowers, don't take this one home. You know, it's like lilies. When I sell lilies, I tell the customer, if you have a cat, disclaimer, this is poisonous. It's highly toxic. And they'll either go ahead and buy the lily package anyway, because they know their animal, or they'll select a different bouquet. Um, did y'all watch the live chat with Serena last night on You Can't Eat the Grass? I thought it was really interesting what she was talking about with her sunflowers and how she's going to grow some in the hothouse or greenhouse hoop house. She's going to start with white sunflowers for the spring 
and then go up Dara. I have not tried Dara. Loxburr is able to get. I'm growing way more Loxburr. But uh, she starts her sunflowers. She's going to start them early this year inside a greenhouse so that they're nice and protected. And she doesn't have to wait for her last frost. And she's going to do white sunflowers to start out for the spring. And she got me thinking. I mean, I love yellow personally. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to grow some more white sunflowers and just see. You know, the yellow sunflowers flew off my table last year. But it was also so people like the white ones, but not many. Majority of them. But maybe if I compare some white sunflowers, some bright foxglove, or if I still have tulips at that point, tulips or ranunculas, you know, they may sell well. We'll see. I have decided that I'm increasing my prices for sure. Uh, last year I was selling $10 bouquets and it's just not enough. They were small, you know, I didn't have as many flowers. So the $10 price point made sense last year. This year, if all goes according to plan, which we know how, you know, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan, then I should have plenty of flowers and I can sell them at $20 price point and see how it goes. I'd rather start out at $20 and see what sells and what works and then go down if I really have to, if nothing's selling, then try and go up after going back to market. I've been doing the math. I have an Excel spreadsheet made out on markup for tulips. Did you see that there were pro cut peach sunflowers now on the Sunflower Selections website? Oh, don't tell me that. I'm supposed to be done seed buying for the year. It's about to be a new year for the season, for the season. I'm, don't tell me about those peach sunflowers. Oh my gosh. I already have so many sunflowers. I have a box dedicated to sunflowers right now. I bought a lot of them. I love the peach passion. Is it similar to the peach passion sunflowers? Because those were so cute. I love them. <sighs> sunflowers. I love me some sunflowers and so do my customers. They sell so well and I think a lot of the bouquets I'm going to do are going to be sunflower rich with a lot of status. I grew purple verbena last year and just that beautiful bright pop of purple with that bright yellow sold really well. So I'm going to substitute verbena for status or have status instead of verbena this year. You know, I haven't tried Feverfew yet. I think I saw it growing a lot last year on YouTube. I just haven't taken that step yet. I have decided though, I'm not, I'll, I'll try baby's breath one more time. And then if it still doesn't work out, I'll probably end up eventually trying Feverfew. I may start turning that bowl bed into the experiment bed during the summer. The peach ones on Johnny's. Ooh. Yeah, also here in Louisiana, a lot of people love purple and yellow together because of our state's school down south, LSU. So everything that can be purple and gold just goes great for football or basketball. Just people love purple and gold. So the more sunflowers I can sell with purple in them, I'm going to do it. Very excited about selling. Is it spring yet, guys? Almost feels like spring. For those of you who might have just joined, here's my beautiful flower that bloomed like four months early. I still could, I wish y'all could have seen my face when I removed that row cover and there was, looks similar to Peach Passion, but they have more of a brown center. You're going to get me in trouble. I'm going to have to stay away from those seed sites y'all johnny sent me a letter a letter like actually snail mail a letter i have my own representative now and they sent me a list of all the seeds i bought this year so that i could reorder easily with my representative it's like i don't need you to do that please don't do that i do not need to buy more seeds i have more seeds than i need 
already. And, you know, I still have the seed packets from the gifted tomato. Big thanks to her. She also uh, gave me a few other seeds that weren't in the gift kit, like lamb's ear. Never grew that before, but I think it would work well as a filler. I think I've seen where people use lamb's ear as a filler, so may have to try that. Is it a cool flower? I could see it being a cool flower. I'm giving Dusty Miller another try. You know, last year I gave up on it because it just took so long. Snowflake baby's breath. I've never heard of snowflake baby's breath. I will have to research that. That is a new one. I've only seen the Covenant Garden baby's breath, and that's what I've been trying to grow. And I think that's what uh, came in the seed kit was Co Covenant Garden baby's breath. Let's see. Nope, ladies lace. Ladies lake the lace baby's breath, 24 to 30 inch for the height. We'll see. Irish eyes, Rubecchia. I've got a running list in my head of all the flowers I want and don't need. And guys, I've got a critter in my meadow. I uh, went back there where I planted all those daffodils and I had like five bulbs. The hole had been dug again and the daffodil was just sitting right next to it. Maybe it was a squirrel thinking that it was something good to eat and or I'm not sure, but I had to replant about five daffodil bulbs because they were just sitting nice and neat. I didn't have one that was just sitting in the hole still, but it was all exposed. It's like, I remember vividly looking and making sure I planted everything. I don't know, something thought it was getting a treat and instead it got a daffodil bulb. Could have at least been polite and put it back. I was out there the other morning screaming at the deer. You've had that happen too with your daffodils? What is doing that, Angie? What is pulling up our daffodils? But uh, I walked outside and there were two deer. Um, I do not use organic fertilizers. I use synthetic and some organic. It, I'm not all organic. It, it would be really hard. I try not to use pesticides. I've been trying to use good bugs to battle the bad bugs, but I may have to, at least on the tulips and the ranunculas, use some neem oil, which is organic, you can get it. But, you know, using the pesticides last year, I noticed a huge difference when I stopped. Um, the bugs, yeah, you get more bad bugs, but also saw an increase in the good bugs. A lot of bees. I never knew bees slept in flowers until I stopped spraying the neem oil. Even the neem oil, spraying it nightly, once a week. I didn't have as many insects around, but once I stopped spraying my flowers completely, I had so many more bees and good bugs to help battle those bad bugs. The only time I really sprayed anything last year was on my, what is it, Coral Fountain Amaranth. Yes, my Amaranth. The flea beetles here are so bad, and apparently Amaranth really attracts them because I thought I was doing pretty good on the bug problem until I planted out my seedlings of Amaranth and it just looked like Swiss cheese. <laughs> they attacked them so badly. So I've got to figure out something for those flea beetles. Because I do, I enjoy seeing the bees and everything else. Moonflowers? Ooh, what's a moonflower? Espoma products. Ooh, I like Espoma too, but it's, I can't get it here. Besides, in the Espoma products that I can find are at Lowe's and they're in the little five pound bag. I'm like, I need the 50 pound bag, please. Like what Garden Answer uses. So, yeah, not organic. Maybe one day, but right now I need all the help I can get, even if it's synthetic. But I do like to mix in a lot of organic matter. So as much compost as I can, natural farming, that'll be good. You know, for those who want to do it, certainly should. 
uh, I admire Florette for being able to be organic and do what she does. Her flowers are so beautiful. But it's one of those steps. I never thought that I would work towards organic. But after I stopped spraying and saw the beauty of the garden with all those insects, I'll probably slowly work that way. Yeah, the salt's too much. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, so far, I'm good on the salt level. It's everything else that makes my plant short and it comes back in my soil test, which I need to get tested again pretty soon. Uh, definitely, you know, not testing your soil is a big mistake. Oh, I'm excited to see what the results are for this year after amending it so much. Well, Candace ordering the big bags of Espoma from Amazon Aren't they more expensive on Amazon? Because every time I look, they want like 60 bucks for a 50 pound bag. And man, for my size, I need way more than that. Yeah, just try one thing at a time and you know, take it one day at a time. But uh, compost, I'm gonna be ordering cotton gin compost for my sunflowers. I'm pretty excited about that. Ace Hardware, we only have one. It's about 45 minutes away, and they do not carry the Espoma products in that one. It's so frustrating. And then my local store, my local nursery store, I need to call them and ask them if they will order me the 50-pound bags and how much it would be if they did. Because I think I've seen one or two Espoma bags there. But once again, it's the tiny size that you need for, like, a small home garden. I've got like 3,000 square feet of garden space. 4,000 now. Oh, really? I'll have to look into that. I think I looked before about having it shipped to store, but I don't, I don't think that they would or it was like super expensive. You know, I have to choose my cost. Speaking of which, really new to that financial reality how much I've spent on this flower farm video. I will eventually get that recorded for y'all, maybe by the end of the year, which is, oh my gosh, y'all. It's about to be January. Ooh, the sheer went by way too fast and yet slow at the same time. Do y'all have any big plans for New Year's? What seed start mix do I use? Um, so lately I've been using the Pro Mix Lisa. I really, I started using just a general seed mix at my local feed farm store, local nursery store. And that was $10 a bag and I was going through it. So when I placed that giant order with Nolts Produce, they had the three cubic foot vacuum sealed bag of Pro Mix. And that's what I'm using now. I bought three of those bags thinking I would go through them in no time. I just now finished my first bag of Pro Mix, and that's after like 50 trays worth of going through it. It has lasted. So if you can place a big order with Nolts, or if you're willing to order that 30 pound bag from Nolts, it is worth it. It is so worth it. I was hesitant because I didn't think it would go that far for that much money, but it does. It lasts and it is totally worth it. Hey, mom. Thanks for joining me, mama. Yeah, flea beetles do. They, oh, I don't like them. Oh, they attack everything and they make it look like Swiss cheese. But they only really attack the amaranth. So I think maybe I need to have like a sacrificial plot of amaranth. And then plant some more amaranth somewhere else. Kind of like Thought Hill Farm had the Glads. Where she had one that was just overtaken by thrips. And then the other one that was way across the field did fine with no thrips. Maybe that's what I'll have to do with my amaranth. So that I can grow it this year without flea beetles just taking them out. I love the look of Coral Fountain amaranth or emerald tassels amaranth. It's just so unique the way it just drapes. We'll see. Yeah, you don't have to apply that much. Yeah, you know, it's just learning what I need to apply and when. 
Oh, well, I don't have to. So the synthetic that I use, I buy a gigantic bag and I only do it maybe twice a year. So it's just, it's a pelleted form. I mix my own fertilizer. So I buy the ag. The ag extension office wants to offer my soil sample. They make recommendations of what to buy and what percentages to use. So I just take it to my local farm and nursery store, O'Neill's Farm and Garden, and go, I need this, this, and this. And they provide it to me, and then I just mix it up at home. Oh, thank you, Penny. That's so sweet of you to say. <laughs> Always get nervous on these lives. But uh, so I buy, you know, 33% nitrogen, and then I've got the potash, and then I've got the potassium, whatever the third one is, and I mix it up myself along with lime. I add lots of lime because I forget where we're at on the scale. We're the opposite of garden answer. I think she's alkaline and we're very acidic. It's one or the other. We're the opposite of her. So I have to add lots of lime. So I just mix it up and then before I go to till and everything else, I just sprinkle it out and mix it in real well. And I do that about twice a year. So I'm not constantly fertilizing, but I think I'm going to take a tip from the flower guy off YouTube where he sprays with the fish emulsion. I may start doing that on a weekly basis, walking through the flower farm with a backpack sprayer or something and spraying fish emulsion to help feed the plants. Because, you know, after producing for so long, they do need to be more food they need to level up that's what you do see i haven't done that i didn't really do that last year i just kind of let them be i think i sprinkled some it wasn't a spoma it was an off-brand kind of like a spoma i sprinkled it around some plants but i think the fish emulsion will be good i'll draw critters that way with the fish emulsion it'll draw critters. I thought it would keep the deer away. I thought he said it smelled bad to the deer. I might have to reconsider that then. <sighs> or get used to the critters. You know, I wish y'all could have seen me the other morning. I walked outside in my bathrobe and there were deer in my backyard. And I went to shouting at them. Told them they better move it or I was going to get my parents to come out there and hunt. I used to do biotone to plant my bulbs in the landscape. <sighs> my comments disappear too fast. Oh, hey, I figured out a button. Okay, sorry. Extremely green. I'm a believer in that product. Yes, and you, you see her using all of the Espoma products and her plants look so good on Garden Answer. <sighs> maybe one day. I told my husband, I think maybe next winter I'm going to tackle our front porch area with landscaping. Oh, okay, don't use it on the zinnias once they start flowering. That's good to know. We've lived in this house for four years now, and I've done no landscaping. Unless you count the flower farm, which is just rose. I'm really great with rose. But I think I would like to take some of the foxgloves that I'm growing, the extras that I don't want to get rid of, and I'll plant a few of them out there in the front of the house and make a nice little landscaping or attempt to. What? <laughs> sing for you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been on YouTube drunk. <laughs> but I do like to sing. Oh, poor kids. I embarrass them so much with my singing, especially in the car. I always like to sing to Emily when I let her out. She's like, Mom, please stop. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think I'm finally confident. I've got like 10 houseplants now, all living. I haven't lost a single one. I'm very proud of myself right now. So I think it's time to start landscaping the house. And of course, I'll record it all and put it up. Uh, my husband will probably intervene right now and talk about the porch of death. My front porch has a bunch of dead plants on it that, you know, I bought in the spring and I was going to keep them all alive. I need to invest in a good drip system that goes up to the porch. I have pretty good with the drip tape. I'm still learning the drip tape for Outback with the flower farm. But that's a lot easier to maintain and set up to me than 
a drip system for plants on my front porch with the window box and the hanging plants. Well, I wouldn't give if I could have Laura come down and help me set up a drip system, right? It would be so amazing. But I would love to have some flowers out front. Right now, if you drove up, you would not know. Thanks, darling. Yes, it's similar to the Adams Family front porch. You know, it looks great during Halloween. It suits it perfectly for Halloween. <laughs> but uh, when you drive up to my house, it does not look like a flower farm. You would have to go out into the back to actually see the plants. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. So I would like to start landscaping that. And maybe that's what I'll do with my extra plants is landscaping. There we go. Solution. I wish my memory was good, Penny. My memory is so gone. I'll have to look back at that. I know I sang in one of the Amaranth videos with uh, Don't Turn Around. Oh, what are y'all going to do for New Year's is what I was asking. I'm going to be having a nice date with my couch and watching some TV. Maybe re-watching some stuff on You Can't Eat the Grass. Because, you know, it's that time of year where there's no flowers or anything. It's nice to watch back when there were blooms on other people's channels and see how that would be. I love watching the flower tours that You Can't Eat the Grass does where Serena's just covered. Her whole farm is just covered in those beautiful zinnias. I'm like, oh, yes, I'm ready for that. Yes, I do watch Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farm. I don't watch her as much as I do the others, but I do like to watch her. You'll be dreaming in flowers. There you go. But uh, I do like to watch her, especially when she goes on. Uh, she taught me how to succession plant. She kind of helped me figure that out a little bit better by watching her video on succession planting sunflowers. I'm hoping to succession plant correctly this year. Uh, last year was not very good. You know, I didn't plant everything well and I ended up with a whole week without any focal flowers so hopefully this year that will be mastered I've got a game plan in here I hope it works I'm going to be planting sunflowers every two to three weeks though so did y'all pick up on that tip that Serena dropped it really clicked with me she said she plants sunflowers she'll plant more than one did you see her video on one with dried flowers? Yes, that's such a great video. Of She'll go ahead and plant her pro cuts, and she'll plant another kind of flower that takes a little bit longer for bloom time that same day so that she doesn't have to plant every week. And for me, that just, I don't know, for me, it just clicked. I was like, oh my gosh, that's a brilliant idea. Let me go ahead and plant the one set bloom in 60 days and then plant another row of one set plant after 70 or 80 days and keep doing it that you know do two or three rows at a time that way and then wait two or three weeks and plant the same kind of row that way we have some flowers all the time we just have to watch out for deer and crows <sighs> crows really messed me up last year or this year 2021 I had to plant that bed three times before the crows finally let the sunflower seeds grow. And that's because I covered it with bird netting. But I'm super excited. I'll probably start sunflowers in March is when I'll be able to start mine. Because sunflower seedlings can take a light frost. Sunflower seedlings can take a light frost. Not a hard frost, but a light frost the seedlings can take. So... I'm going to just kind of keep trying to push the envelope with those sunflowers. So, really love me some sunflowers. Oh, it's getting late. So, guys, you know, I really enjoy talking and hanging out with y'all, whether it be on the You Can't Eat the Grass chat room or here, Charlottesville, Virginia. Yay. Awesome. Uh, we're chatting with you here. I know I don't have a schedule for the lives. For those of you who missed the live and you're watching on the replay, I'm sorry. I just never know I'm going to do this. Where do you get the sunflower stumps out? Yes, okay, so sunflowers, they, they are like trees. So after I cut them, I let them 
kind of sit there for a little bit until I'm ready to tear them out. And what I'll do is I'll use my foot to bend them over. And they say the sunflower roots are really good for the soil. So I'll try to cut it in as close as I can to the ground and mix that root ball in. I try to retail it and mix the root ball in real good and then add more compost. If it's really hard and stubborn, I'll you know slowly rock it back and forth to get it out and I'll bang the root ball a lot to get all the dirt off. Because if the roots are really good for the soil and it's supposed to add nitrogen back I think into the soil or something like that is what some flowers do. I want as much of that as I can and I'll add more compost after the sunflowers to revive that soil before planting more sunflowers. I'm really thinking I'll probably end up having to move that sunflower bed area at some point just to give that soil a break because that's where it gets the most work is you know I'm planting two or three successions of sunflowers in that one bed area. And that's just really using up a lot of nutrients out of the soil, really working it. So I may this year use it for sunflowers again and maybe next year give it a year off maybe and plant them somewhere else. I don't know. I'm going to have to research that. I worry about overworking the soil too much. You know, we can keep adding compost in and everything, but I do, I worry about the soil. I've worked so hard to get it where it is today. It's actually brown, not red brown soil so excited to have brown soil and not red clay so we'll see i don't know but sunflowers are extremely hard to get out of the ground you're right you just kind of have to rock them back and forth uh, i would recommend planting them about four inches to six inches apart that way they don't get so huge because you know the closer you plant them the smaller the stem is there we go the smaller the stem is so if you're like me, you always end up having like a giant one that you had to get rid of. Yeah, clay is horrible. Horrible clay. And you'll rub the stalks. That happens too. I'm, I'm always paranoid after I've cut the sunflowers and the stalks are up. I try to cut them where they're like yay high, depending on the height of them. Because I'm so scared that like my kid's going to trip and be impaled by a sunflower stem. I don't know. That's just junk that runs through my mind. I'm like, oh my god, my kid's gonna die from a sunflower stem not being left. I let my dog pull them out. Okay, I need you to train my dog so that my dog will pull out the sunflower stems when they're done. <laughs> yeah, or poke your eyes out. You know, it's just like I think of the Indiana Jones and in like the Temple of Doom, where it's all the stakes in the bottom pointed up, and if you fall on, you die. That's what it reminds me of. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall on the stack of sunflower stems and be impaled. Okay, we have really <laughs> went off topic with that one. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I really hope y'all have a Merry, not Merry Christmas. I really hope y'all have a great New Year's. Looking forward to 2022 and doing the grow along with those of you who have joined it. And for those of you who didn't, we'll be posting along the way so that you can be part of the fun as well. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Bye.